All right, so I'm done running around scuba diving and just got back from the Florida Keys. Got the wife out on the catamaran, so I've got all that out of my system for this year. And uh, got a cold front coming in, and it's going to be time to put some meat in the freezer. So I'm going to be doing some bow hunting, see if I can get some deer in the freezer and also some hogs. And when I'm not doing that, I'm also going to be out jug fishing. So time to switch gears and put some meat in the freezer. So I need to get out of here with my bow and fling some arrows. Got my bow out here. Fling some arrows, see how I'm doing this year. I gotta put this buff on because I don't want that bowstring hanging up into my beard and ripping my face off. That'd be a bad thing. Alright, 20 yards, that's not too bad, especially not having shot since last year. A little bit more practice just to tighten it up just a little bit more, but overall, not bad. Alright, it's evening time. Hoping for a, a deer this evening. Now keep in mind, I'm a meat hunter. I put meat in the freezer. I am not above taking a doe. In fact, we have probably an overpopulation of doe. I generally take uh, medium-sized bucks, generally leave the young bucks alone, and also leave the doe alone that have yearlings with them. But if I can spot an older doe that doesn't have a yearling, good chance I'm going to take her. A couple of things to keep in mind. This is not a Texas high fence hunt. This is what's considered a fair hunt. I hunt over a game trail, and I try to get as close to a deer scrape as I can. There are no feeders, no time feeders, no corn thrown on the ground, none of that stuff. No scents. I don't even use a food plot. Although I do mow an area near my stand, the natural seeds in the ground sprout up and grow. We also have a local tree farm. And from what I've been told, the tree farm has a permit to shoot deer year round when they come onto their property and around their trees. This being the case, I have never seen a buck larger than eight points in the 16 years that I have lived at this property. All right, it's been raining all day today. Finally slacked off, cooled down a little bit. It's been nearly 90 degrees for the last few days. So I'm gonna go back here in the tree stand, set up and see if I can see something. I noticed that on my trail cameras that the bucks are finally starting to move around a little bit. And they have a scrape line developed just down a tree line from, uh, from where my tree stand is at. So when we get out here, I might do a little rattling. Generally, I don't do real good rattling in the evening, but I uh, might give it a try anyways. Looks like the wind's out of the west, so that's not too bad. All right, there's a buck chasing a doe down there. Hopefully she'll make it down here and drag him along. Oh, there's no one. Maybe two bucks chasing.
All right, it's evening time. Yesterday evening, had a deer come in right at dark, a buck. Tall rack, six point, maybe eight point, but uh, he was spooked, twitching and jerking at the slightest sound. Even if an acorn hit the ground, that sucker was jumping to the left or the right. He came within 20 yards, but I mean, he was on full alert. So I didn't even bother pulling my string back on him because I have no doubt he would have bolted forward or dropped to the ground or something as soon as he heard the string snap. I'll wait another day or two and maybe he'll go in full rut and be thinking about other things. Also had that herd of deer come through. Kept a close eye on them and it looks like all of them except one lost their yearling. They're fawn this year. And that fawn stuck pretty close to the mama. There was a dominant doe. I may go ahead and take her since she doesn't have a fawn with her. She was the only one that was smelling me. She was just catching a hint of me. She blew like probably four or five times. The other deer looked at her like she was crazy. I don't know what that was all about, unless that lead buck was actually an antler doe. That would make more sense. All right, I'm on like day four of the hunt, getting a good view of all the deer that are in the area and on the trail camera. There's not a whole lot. I've never seen, in all the years I've lived here, I've never seen a 10 point buck. There's a uh, tree farm just a half mile from the house that has permit to hunt year round or to kill deer year round that gets into their tree farm. Bucks don't get very big over here. Plus there's probably a poacher or two. Eight point is about as big as they get. But uh, anyways, I need to hurry up and put something in the freezer. So I'll probably look for a doe that doesn't have a yearling and uh, or maybe that six point buck that's walking around. There's a couple of uh, four corns. I'm gonna leave them alone. Didn't even really want to take the small six point, but there's just not much to pick from. There's a tall rack six point running around. I'd take him, but uh, I've only seen him once and it was right before dark. I forgot to mention, it's like a little after 10 o'clock, so I'm gonna do a late morning hunt into an early afternoon. If I'm down southeastern Oklahoma, that's whenever I take my biggest bucks. Anyways, I wanna do a late morning, early afternoon hunt and see what's moving around.
Boy, it's just nothing but small bucks around here. Well, maybe. I'll give it about 20 minutes. I need to go get my skin and knife anyways. Looked like a pretty good hit. It was a little bit further back than what I like, but uh, he's down. Empty driveway. Looks like I'll be tracking the deer alone. Well, except for my dog. <laughs> they won't be coming. Got a Cabela's game card here. This thing is definitely worth its weight. That's for sure. All right, I have recovered the arrow. Broad head and everything's intact. That's good. Okay, and there's blood. Chloe is on up ahead of me. All right, got a good amount of blood right here. Ground's tore up. You can see kind of a dark line down through there where the buck ran, where it's churned the leaves up. Well. That buck didn't go far. Chloe's already found it. What you got, Chloe? Oh yeah, that's a double lung hit. A little bit further back than what I wanted, but it's still plenty good. Huh, looks like a little late point. Yes it is, a little late. That'll work. Ooh. Tell you what, that's gonna put some meat in the freezer right there. I do appreciate that. All right, now I need to get this thing field dressed. Anybody wondering? Field dress is pretty simple. You just peel down the sternum here, right where the sternum ends. You wanna cut, I like to cut just above it. Still where I've got some sternum. Then I drop the blade right in here, being real careful not to cut the gut. Puncture through the uh, muscle wall. And then just lift up with your two fingers, and then run a knife right down through here. All the way down. Make sure you cut the testicles off as soon as you can, just so it doesn't taint anything. Very important not to get the hair on the meat, and do not get these glands on the meat either. This is what it's going to look like when you're done. Right below the sternum bone, cut right in there, and I have removed all the entrails out. Make sure you get the bladder out without uh, slicing it and causing urine to pour everywhere. Up inside the chest cavity, I've pulled the lungs out, but I have left the heart intact in here because I also eat the hearts. And all you're going to have over here is a gut pile. That'll be gone by tomorrow morning from coyotes, possums, all that good stuff. And if there is anything left, then the uh, buzzards will come in and take it out. So within 24 hours, this will be gone. And if I leave my dog out here, it'll be gone shorter. Chloe, stop. I gotta go get my deer cart, get this uh, buck hung and skinned out. All right, Cabela's game cart. There's probably a half dozen different ways to do this, but uh, looks like this is probably gonna be the easiest keep that body centered on this cart while I wrestle my way through these trees. I will say though, except for the occasional limb on the ground, this cart rolls really well. You just gotta avoid the larger limbs so it doesn't scotch the wheels. <coughs> like that. So this way this goes down. First I raise the deer up with my front end loader. I wash out the inside of the body cavity with the water hose. And then I start skinning from the top down. Then skin it where the skin drops away from the carcass and drops down. I'll probably save the skin on this one so I can make a quiver. And once the skin's completely removed, then I'll remove the legs at the knee joints. And then I'll start at the bottom of the deer, removing the hind quarter, the front quarters, then the back strap, tenderloin, 
and etc all the way up to the uh, neck roast the sun's about to go down so i seriously doubt i'm going to be able to film much of this Four. that's good right there okay skinning these bucks out what you want to do is cut a ring around the neck and then at the throat cut all the way down the sternum all the way down to where you gutted the deer on the legs cut below the knee joint cut a ring all the way around it then run your blade all the way up the leg and meet over here to where the original cut was same way with the other leg and you're going to do the same thing with the hind legs be careful of the torsal glands you don't want to get that stuff on your blade and then cross contaminate over to your meat another thing when you're making these cuts you do not cut like this you'll cut a lot of hair make sure you're running your knife up inside and you're cutting outward you're cutting outward that way you're cutting the skin and you're basically pushing the hair aside as the knife comes out you'll still clip some hair but nothing like if you were to come in from the outside like this cutting down you'll cut all kinds of hair and just have a, a mess what are you doing anyways back to skinning once all the cuts are made at all four points then you're ready to start skinning the deer from the top down skinning is a pretty straightforward simple process you grab a hold of skin and you pull it away from the meat and you'll see a little bit of white right in here and your blade can't do it while holding the camera but your blade will slide right in through there and separate the skin away from the meat so I'm going to take my time with this because I want to make an arrow quiver so I don't want to nick the uh, hide because anywhere I cut through the hide I'm going to have to re-sew. That's a little better angle. When you're pulling the skin, obviously the skin's white, but right here there's this kind of uh, thin membrane and that's basically loosely holding the skin to the meat. That's the stuff that you want to cut right there and then the skin falls right off the meat. Alright, it's gotten dark on me. So once we get to this point and all the skin is off the deer, what I do is I take the legs and I'll take a hatchet. Make sure your hands are far enough away from the hatchet and I hit the leg bone just with the tip of the, uh, the hatchet, swing it right above the knee and hit this leg bone here. After a couple of swings, that leg bone will snap, both of them, and then you can come in here with your knife and cut right through the tendons. And you'll remove the lower part of the leg. You can tell I've already done that to the back legs. The lower leg has a large ball joint. It's best to enter right in here where the stomach begins and go straight in and you'll find the ball joint. And then you just have to work your knife around the ball joint. Once you work your knife around the tendons on the ball joint, then this whole hind quarter will come off. Front quarter is basically a floating leg. There is no joint in these front quarters. Pull it away from the body and just slice right down through here and the entire shoulder will come off. Like I said, there is no joint on these front quarters. Okay, so this is basically what it looks like. Once you've sliced it on the inside of the leg all the way up to the, uh, to the back, this literally falls right away. No joint at all. Okay, once the hind quarters are off and the front quarters, then you can come in here and get the tenderloin. Tenderloin is on the inside of the backbone down low, just above the, the hip joint. It's on either side of the spine, one here and one over here. You can literally grab a hold of it and feel it. It's very, very tender. You can actually tear it with your fingers. I want to cut on both sides of it and gently work it out and then go over here to the other side and do the same thing. Okay, these are your tenderloin cuts. Like I said, you can grab a hold of them and finesse them away from the backbone. They're mostly held at the ends and just a little bit on the inside attached to the uh, close to the spinal column, but barely attached. Mostly you just cut the ends off and this whole tenderloin will pull out. That now goes in the ice chest. All right, now that that's done, I think I'm gonna turn this buck around and I'm gonna pull the back straps off. All right, back strap. Easiest way to do it is start at the shoulder, just below the neck, and the spinal column has a ridge that goes all the way down the center of the backbone. In fact, you can see the line right here. 
put a knife in right here going all the way until you hit the ribs sliding parallel with the spinal column here and then do the same thing on the other side all the way down all right and then you can come in from the side of the ribs and meet it where the knife stopped at the ribs you can slide in from this angle and you can literally pull the back strap right off this deer just by making these two cuts one down on the side of the spine and then one in from the edge of the ribs following the ribs all the way down okay so i've cut on both sides of the spinal column and then i run the knife in up against the rib cage and met where my original cut was and the back strap will come right off just like that right there so this is basically real close to a 90 degree angle inside here so you bring your knife in from the top and then you bring your knife in from the side and it is all bone right in here and you don't lose any of the back strap okay this is what the back strap will look like there is a layer of muscle over the back strap and some membranes and stuff of that nature this stuff right here will peel off see there's a little bit of muscle right there but underneath it is the back strap so you can actually pull this away just like that you can see i already did it on this one pull that back and then it exposes that back strap right down through there whenever i bring this into the house i'll trim all this off and then this stuff right here will be turned into jerky or possibly ground deer so that leaves us with the uh the belly meat and the rib meat now me personally what i do is i shave the meat off the ribs and then i'll cut the meat out in between the ribs there's just a little bit of meat there and I'll either grind it up or sometimes I'll take the meat in between the ribs and I'll put it in a dehydrator with a little bit of salt and I give it to the dogs as jerky treats. Now anywhere you have a uh, entry or exit wound and the meat is bloodied like this, feed that to the dogs, throw it away, leave it for the buzzards. You don't want to eat this that's bruised around here. Um, it will have an irony flavor that you will not like. Okay, working our way through it. So I started up here at the base of the neck roast and I just shaved the meat off of the ribs all the way down, all the way to the front here to where the brisket's at. And there's not much brisket on the deer. And then all the way down till I hit the belly meat and I cut all the belly meat off. And once that was done, then I jumped over here on the hind quarter where the uh, rump is, rump roast but there's not much rump roast on a uh, deer either. But a bit of meat there um, that'll be ground up. Um, I'm probably gonna trim that up a little bit. Looks like I left a little there. And then next, I'll go inside in between the ribs. Okay, so I've got one side of the ribs done. As you can tell, I don't leave a whole lot left behind. So the Department of Wildlife's definitely not gonna be aggravated at me for uh, wanton waste. Uh, I don't know if you can see it in there, but dangling inside there is the heart. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and reach up in there and take that heart out, get that put in the ice chest, and then I'm going to switch over to the other side and do the ribs. Okay, and here's the heart. Actually, a really good piece of meat right there. There's no grain to it at all. All you have to do is cut a little bit of this uh, white fat off the outside, the heart strings on the inside, fillet it out, and man, it is good rib meat is off hearts out now the last cut of meat is that neck roast right there okay neck roast pretty easy to deal with all you have to do is cut down the backbone and then just peel the muscle away from the vertebrae as you work your knife parallel with the backbone and just work your way all the way around to the front and then you'll have the esophagus here just leave that there and just on this one side, it doesn't look like a whole lot of meat. That's a big chunk of meat. That's a lot of meat right there. So anyways, that's just half of the neck roast. And on some of the big bucks, this can get really big. All right, look at that. That's a big old neck roast. And that is how you dress out your deer with very little muscle left at all. All right, hope you guys got a little something out of that. This was done with just a skinning knife and a hatchet. And you can take it all the way down to the bone without any problem at all.